Well, good evening, everybody, and welcome back to Cowboys in the Kitchen. My name is Paul Simmons. I am your host. And um, so the last few times we've been working with sourdough, and we're not going to do that tonight because the last time around, I used up all the sourdough starter. It's not to say I'm never going to make sourdough again, uh, but we're just not doing anything with it for now. Uh, I've had a couple of people ask me where I got those recipes from. This is called, I don't know, it probably looks backwards on your... Deal, but it's called the sourdough cookbook and it is actually out of print so remember Amazon and eBay are your friends um, if you have questions about any of the recipes that I've shared with you uh, please feel free to send me a message on the page um, tonight we're gonna go with another recipe that's on a different cookbook that is also out of print from my wonderful days in Seattle the Seattle Mariners' wives every year put out something new, calendar. Um, they did a couple of different cookbooks, and it's always for their charity that they raise money for. And so one year they came out with the, um, gosh, what did they call this? Oh, the, pretty easy. The Seattle Mariners' cookie book. Um, and again, this is out of print, so you're probably your best bet is either, again, Amazon or eBay. There is a recipe in here. They're not even my ginger snaps. They're Ripken's ginger snaps. Cal Ripken's wife, if you ever watch this, thank you, thank you, thank you. I get so many compliments on these cookies. Um, they never get hard. You know, ginger snaps can get really crinkly, crunchy. You can break a tooth on them. These never do that. They stay soft. They're awesome. Um, anyway, so we're going to go ahead and make that. I already have the oven turned on because this mixes up pretty darn fast. Uh, it goes up to 350 and stays on. Um, when I am making cookies, and I'm probably going to move the camera around a little bit, um, I kind of tend to, especially with this kitchen, I have stations. Okay, So, yes, their stuff is going to get mixed over there, but I'm going to wind up bringing it over here and rolling them out over here. The baking trays are going to go over here. But for now, I'm going to have my uh, bowl, and I'll adjust the camera for a minute here and um, uh, set it up. This is where I'm going to mix my dry ingredients. This is going to make a double batch. And the reason I say we're going to make a double batch is the one lie in all of this. Sorry, Cal Rupkin's wife. It says makes five dozen. That is a lie of the devil. It won't make five dozen. It'll make five dozen if you make a, a double batch. Um, but anyway, I will adjust this. Hopefully you can see yeah see the counter hey there's me okay so i'm going to set this out here and all the dry stuff is going to go in here so we're going to put in it says sift in but you don't have to sift in uh you need flour and it says two and a quarter cups of all-purpose flour so it's going to be four and a half so if i use a half cup measuring cup that's going to be nine of those One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. flour is all done. Uh, baking soda. Let's get some good old Arm & Hammer in here. Um, baking soda. Two teaspoons, so we want four. And I need my teaspoon. You know, I should have probably did what I did last time and gotten all the teaspoons and stuff up ahead of time, but I didn't. There's a teaspoon. Okay. So with the nice little flap on the box here, I usually use the side. So one... Two, three, and four. Okay. Salt. Um, half a teaspoon of salt, so we need a whole teaspoon of salt. Pretty easy stuff to do. If you have a steady hand, you can measure this out right over the container. If you don't, 
Don't, because the last thing you want to do is just get a big old pile of salt in there. And that's about right. Drop that in. All right, who's got what here? Uh, ginger. Oh, that was the oven. Um, ginger. One teaspoon of ground ginger, so we'll need two teaspoons of ground ginger. But because the neck on this is really little, I need the half teaspoon thingy. Actually, there's a quarter. There's a half tablespoon. There's another teaspoon. I mentioned that things should be more organized in here. That's all right. I'll use the quarter and I'll uh, do eight of these. One, two, and dip it down almost for an out. Three. I'm gonna have to make a note to myself. Get more. Four. Hope I got enough. Five. Six. Seven. Oop, there we go. And one more. Hey, buddy. Harley's just coming and cruising through. You can go lay down. Okay. It'll be good. Um, let's see. Teaspoon of cinnamon. So we need two of those. That one I have a bigger container. So we're good to go there. Teaspoon. So I need two of these. Need one. And two. And cloves. Half a teaspoon of ground cloves, so I need a whole teaspoon of ground cloves. I'm going to use the narrow thing again. I'll probably just use the other end of it. I'm not fixing things for you, Harley. Okay, so there's one. Two, three, and four. Cool. So that's all the spices. The reason that he keeps coming in here is because this whole week I've been on this Daniel Fast thing, so I haven't had any meat. I haven't had any soda pop, which you guys who know me, you know there's a daily rock star involved. And I have not had my rock star since Monday. And um, uh, every night I've been having omelets with vegetables in them. And anytime these guys in here hear me crack an egg, they think I'm making something for them. So I have to make them eggs. So they've had eggs every night for dinner. Because yes, I spoil my dog. So that's all good and stirred up. And can see it still looks like flour. I don't know how well you can tell. It looks just like dirty flour, uh, or actually rye flour. Uh, so that's all ready to go. Uh, let's see. I'll get that out of the way. And now, in the mixing bowl, we get a cream shortening. Okay, so instead of like scooping out ladles and oodles and boodles and poodles of messy shortening from this big old can of Crisco, I use sticks and I had a half a stick left over and it says three quarters cups so two of these two batches is actually one and a half sticks so I'm just gonna take these and go drop them in and yes Bob Bridges if you're watching it's not heart healthy but you know what my friend moderation moderation is key all right, get the top off this. Well, I'll tell you, whoever came up with this idea, they really need to, uh, they need an award of some kind of a raise if they didn't get one. Okay, so now I'll have a whole stick and a half, or a cup and a half, because each, each stick is a cup of Crisco in there. All right, got that in there. 
I can actually take this and put it away. Because I'm going to show you my big trick for making cookies. Um, what else do we want? Uh, brown sugar. need two cups of brown sugar. And I have that set now. And for this, since it's a big old bag, I'm going to use my big old cup. I have to sit there and dink around with little quarter cups or half cups or any of that measuring nine thing. Stick it all in there, pack it all in, boom, there you go. One more go around. Here it comes. Boom, there you go. I usually prefer dark brown sugar, but light brown's okay. And that was all, all I had. I did not want to go out in the blustery cold for it. Um, molasses. Oh boy, that's fun. It says quarter cup of molasses, so we're going to need a half cup. And I refuse to absolutely bore you guys with watching me pour the very last out of this thing here. But I will empty it. If I can get it open, that would really be bad, wouldn't it? 98 pound weakling, cannot open jar. Let's see. So I need a half cup total. Wow, that didn't even make the quarter cup mark. Well, that was about a quarter cup. So. And another dead soldier. Fortunately, I had a spare. All my friends out there going, dude, it's your kitchen. You've always got a spare if it's in your kitchen. There we go. Now we've got a good size half cup. Spin that around. That way you don't have molasses dripping down the side. And since it's the molasses that we're dealing with, we're going to use one of these. Drop this in. There we go. Get that out of there. I mean, you don't have to get every last molecule of the molasses out, but the less that's left in here, the less you have to wash out of here. Oh, look, I just got my counter all sticky. Come on. There we go, Ferdinand one done. I'm going to keep that around because I'm going to wind up using it again. And let's see, two eggs. Yeah, I know, you're going to hear the shells there. Ooh. No, I'm not making more eggs. There we go. And we got it. Okay, so we got two eggs, two cups of sugar, half a cup of molasses, and a cup and a half of Crisco. Go in here, bring it in for the lightning round. Found me. Just let it stir until fluffy. No, that doesn't mean Gabriel Iglesias is showing up. Alright. I'm going to roll up my sleeve. That didn't take, didn't take long. Let that go up there. dry stuff and you can go put it in not all at once very middle I'm gonna let that just stir up 
let the machine do the work, that's what I say. Let it get good and incorporated in there because otherwise you'll get lumps of flour and stuff. I am, however, going to take off my wedding ring again so that I don't get dough in it because we're going to be taking this. Ooh, there we go. That looks good. We're going to be taking this and forming it, rolling it into little balls that we will roll in sugar. And since I don't want my wedding ring encased in even nice smelling dough or in sugar, I'm going to take it off. And we've got the, I'll do what Graham Carey used to do when I was a kid. He'd sit there and go, oh, look at that, isn't that, ooh, that's yummy. Be kind of funny if he tuned in, that'd be awesome. He was one of my favorites when I was a kid and I've gotten to meet him a time or two. Went to his show in Seattle. There we go. Got it all off there. Now, I'm going to take this, yank it out, and I'm going to change things around a little bit. Let's see, I'm going to take you guys and move you over here. No, that's not an automatic panning of the camera. Hold on. Alright. Um, I will need sugar. I don't need my lenses. Flour can go up. All those spices can get put up. Because I'm going to need that space. Oop. Molasses can go up. Let's see. Salt and baking soda. Same spot. And let's see, ginger and cloves, different spot. Cool. Everything's all put up. I don't need these. I don't need this. So what I'm gonna do is these go this goes over here. And I need some sugar. And I need a bowl. Gonna take the sugar. It doesn't say how much you need, it says just sugar for rolling. And I have found that about a cup, and that's roughly a cup, maybe a little more, right there. That is sufficient for rolling all of this. So there we go. So now I can put the sugar back where it usually goes. And I'm gonna go get my air bake pan. These pans are really awesome. If you see the edge, there's actually an, a layer of air that's in there. And they work really well for baking cookies. Uh, do not ever leave them on top of the stove because they will. this part here, will, if you leave it sitting on a burner on the stove, uh, it'll actually melt the bottom of that. So, um, got those. So now you get to see my secret. I do not grease my pan. I use parchment paper. This will last for the whole bath. So for, for uh, the price of two pieces of parchment paper, I basically don't have to wash this cookie sheet if I don't want it. As long as I don't get any on it. Because um, it'll all stay on the parchment paper. So I'm going to go put this up. Sit it over here. I'm going to get a spoon out. That's all we're going to do with this. We're going to take these and roll them. Just make that little ball. And we're going to roll it in sugar. And we're going to do 10 per sheet. And I'll be doing some more here while uh, these are cooking. I usually do, I have two sheets and I keep a head by one and it just keeps the flow going. Okay. So I didn't think I was going to wind up baking anything this week because we had this whole Daniel fast thing going and uh, it turns out our youth pastor and his wife are 
leaving the church for a different place up, uh, I think in northeast up by Akron. Here in, still here in Ohio, but in Akron. And uh, it was really nice kids. And I can call them kids because, yeah, I'm that dang old. But uh, Jason and Andrea, if you're watching, I'm making these just for you. Actually, I'm making these just for me, but you get some. <laughs> the hard part for me is going to be not eating these before Sunday. That requires a lot of willpower, but I think I can handle it. So, If I can handle a whole week of not smoking, because yes, boys and girls, I gave up smoking a week ago. Um, actually, tomorrow's day 8, so... And technically, until midnight, I'm on my week. Alright. Almost there. I think I'm going to do these tonight. And I may have you guys join me again tomorrow night. Um, I don't know if any of you remember Toll House Cookies from like when you were kids. I mean, everybody's got the recipe. All you got to do is go buy a bag of Nestle chocolate chips, right? Um, I take mine and I um, do half chocolate chips and half M&M's and they turn out really good. So I was thinking about making a batch of those tomorrow. And those will make about 80 to a double batch. That's where I really wind up stretching the usage on that mixer. Okay, so there's my, my whopping 10 right there. There they are. Okay, so I'm going to go take these and I'm going to go pop them in the oven. I'm going to set that timer for 10 minutes. Which means I have exactly 10 more minutes until we're done with the show. Sorry, that was loud. That was loud to me. Okay. So i got to do another one here. Actually, I have to roll 20 more. 10 for this sheet and then 10 for the next. And then I'll temporarily get you guys back over here so you can see how I set up the baker's rack. Nobody's up late joining me. I don't see anybody live. Just me. If you're thinking, aren't these really a holiday cookie? No, they're not. <laughs> My wife will tell you, good old Carla Sue, she will tell you, yeah, he'll eat those in the middle of summer. I get a couple of these and a cup of my cinnamon tea, and it's just like, I'm done. I'm done for the day. All right. So what, what am I going to do with these, you might ask? I'm going to take these and put them in the bag. I'll bag them up while they're still warm. And I'll stick them in the freezer. And when they thaw out, they'll be just as soft as when I put them in. I mean, they probably wouldn't if I kept them in the freezer for a year. But they're only going to be in the freezer a couple of days. So that won't hurt nothing. We're having a cookie reception for Jason and Andrea, and um, I figure if I got these, there's about 60, and then the other uh, cookies would be about 80, and we'll have those and be all done with it. There's a lot of folks love them cinnamon rolls. I had a guy come out to the house on Monday and repaired the washing machine. He, he said he didn't like cinnamon. He said, but my wife does, so I gave him one to take home to her. Told her about the show. I said, give that page a like. So he never told me what her name is, but Phil's wife, if you're listening, hey, welcome, right? There we go. So I've got my next 10 all done. And... There's not enough heat 
of that oven to leak out. So I can go ahead and set that next batch there. So we're good to go. And I never set the timer, did I? Uh, timer, we'll say six. So yes, I'm going to be checking that oven a little more thoroughly than I ordinarily would because I didn't set the timer. I'll probably tell you, you know, if you're going to make cookies, you should probably set the timer when you put the cookies in. Unless you got like an hourglass in your head or something. And yes, if you made these really teeny tiny, you could probably get five dozen out of out of a uh, batch. But ginger snaps are one of those cookies that were meant to be like this big, right? All right, there's four. I don't know if you can see or not. I'm just taking these and stacking them up against the edge of the bowl. Five. Bear, bear, out of here. You're going to get stepped on. You better get out or I'll put you on TV. Thank you. Pull it down. It'll be nighttime time here in a little bit. When I'm done baking cookies. Yes, I talked to my dogs. I work out of the house for the most part, so they're about the only company I have in the middle of the day. Unless I'm talking on the phone to someone from the office. And I try not to tell my coworkers, go lay down. Um, let's see, two more. There's one. That's nine. One more. And we got roughly three and a half minutes left on the timer, which means we're making good time, pardon the pun. Okay. So I have a whole rack waiting. And those are going to be sitting right there. And then put the parchment paper up. I'm going to put the recipe book up because we're about as done with that as we can be. I'm going to move you guys back over around here. Hey, Romir! I don't know if I ever used to bake cookies and bring them in over at Safeco or not. I know I do fairly often here. And so now I'm going to take out, set out my uh, baker's rack. And they still have a little bit of icing left on them, so I'm going to kind of scrape that off because it's dry. All right. So, why do you ask, do I have three baker's racks, okay? The hot pan goes here. When it's ready to put cookies off, it goes, the cookies go over here. And... As it stacks up here, the cookies can wind up going on the second one. And if this starts getting full, by the time these are starting to cool off, I can take them and put them on a plate. So, by the way, Ramir, you'll be happy to know, Ramir's still in Seattle, that this recipe, oh, i got to find the cover. Where's the cover? Here it is. The Seattle Mariner's Cookie Book. See, there's the moose. So, got about a minute and a half left on those. I'm going to get my mitts out. So when you go to put them in, it should just be a simple 
pull it out, put the other one in, close the door, set the timer for 10. They smell good. River, go lay down. Go lay down. Here, put them on TV. Tell everybody hi. I don't know if you guys can see him. Yeah, there he is. I've had freckles that weren't as close to me as that. Okay. We're about down to 30 seconds. And I will show these off as we're walking across with them. With these, because of the parchment paper, you really only have to let them cool for about maybe a minute. Maybe two tops. And, okay, almost. Oh, and, and too quick. And, four, three, two, one. There we go. And it was absolutely perfect. You can see these. They're real light. They're real fluffy. Um, let's see. So there's a new batch goes in. And close it up. And put the timer on for kitchen timer. And so the rest of it is just the process of loop around, loop around, loop around. Um, if you do double batch on the chocolate chip M&M cookies, uh, you may get to the point where you're pretty much done before you're done you know if you know what I mean um, you feel like man I'm done baking but these these will go really fast there will only be about six sheets see how easy those slide off and no I'm not even tempted to take one there we go Voila. And there you have winter stamps. So with that, I bid you all a fond good evening. There we go. They're sitting there. Am I even showing them? Yeah, there we go. That's what they look like. Anyway, with that, I bid you all a fond good evening and uh, say God bless. Good night.